You find yourself surrounded by walls too high to climb. Paths beckon on both the left and the right. The stench of death straight ahead. Nine long days have you been in this maze. You are not destined to another nine. And after no food and no sleep, that stench of death seems inviting. This dreaded dungeon is called the Labyrinth. Located on the island of Crete, it was the basis for a popular story of Theseus. Legends say that long ago, King Minos of Crete had won a war against Athens over the slaying of his son and demanded human tribute every few years. Athens would send 14 of their noble youths and maidens to Minos. They were then sent into the labyrinth, a maze built by the famous inventor, Daedalus, father of Icarus. Once inside, forever lost, they would eventually be found by the only living resident of the labyrinth, a monstrosity, half-man, half-bull, called the Minotaur. And eating once every few years can make a soul quite ravenous. The tributes lasted until King Aegis, of Athens, was told by his son, Theseus, that he would prefer to go to Crete as a sacrifice. He told Aegis that if he succeeded, he would change his sails, and return with white sails raised. Once on Crete, Theseus would have an impression on King Mino's daughter, Ariadne. Smitten with love, the young woman gave Theseus a ball of yarn, or string, to use as a way to navigate the labyrinth. Once inside the labyrinth, Theseus tied the string to the doorpost, and entered into the unknown. Because of Ariadne, Theseus roughly knew where to go, and ended up in the heart of the maze, face to face with a sleeping minotaur. After being awoken, the minotaur charged to devour the young warrior, but being a master of Greek wrestling, Theseus took the upper hand, and with a dagger concealed from the guards, killed the minotaur, decapitating the monster. Theseus then set sail back to the mainland, but made a most heartbreaking error. Having forgotten to switch to the white sails, his father, Aegis, looked on from afar, and assumed his son was dead. Stricken with grief, the king flung himself off the cliffs, into the sea. This turn of events is what gave this sea its name, the Aegean. And the advanced peoples of Crete, overseen by the legendary king Minos, is where this civilization gets its name from. The Minoans are regarded as the first true civilization of Europe, formally developed by around 2000 BCE, but having origins as far back as 3500 BCE. Crete wasn't the only inhabited island in the Aegean. There were numerous other regions of the sea with plenty of people. The relatively short distances between islands made the exchange of culture quite easy. Most islands were self-sustaining, but trade was widespread, as Crete was the main source of olives, and vines to make wine. These would later become mainstays in the Mediterranean diet. By around 2500 BCE, the Minoans had coalesced into a series of small stone and brick towns on the shores. Here, they would trade agricultural goods and jewelry created by their artisans. By around 1900 BCE, the Minoans had become more urbanized. A large palace was built at Knossos, the center point of Crete's northern shore. The population around this settlement could have been from 20,000 to 100,000 at its peak. Later, they would build their second largest settlement, Phaistos. This palace was on the southern shore. Malia and Cato Zakros were in the east. These four palaces administered their respective regions of Crete. While we do have tablet pieces with governmental inscriptions, it was written in Linear A, a writing system we have yet to decipher, seemingly non-Indo-European in origin. The main palaces were connected to other smaller towns and villages around the island. Even these areas had refined sewage systems, and baths reminiscent of what would come centuries later, in Rome. As Crete was an island, they were surrounded by not only their Aegean neighbors, 
but civilizations in Africa, like Egypt, and in Asia, in Anatolia and the Levant. So trade and influence was exchanged between these Bronze Age societies. Minoan pottery was even found west, in Sicily. One practice which seemed unique though, was human sacrifice. Throughout history, this ritual has only been seen in the most radical of peoples, or the most fearful. It's possible, these were meant to appease the gods, as Crete was besieged by earthquakes, and the threat of a looming volcano. It is thought these earthquakes finally damaged the palace of Knossos enough, that it had to be rebuilt. This Knossos was rumored to be the palace that held the famous labyrinth, from the Theseus story. This new period saw the island flourish, with trade, and the arts. Frescoes were painted, the most famous being a bull leaping. Revering the animal, those brave enough would stand in front of a charging bull, leap over the dangerous horns, land on the bull's back, and spring off, in a display of both physical agility, and mental durability. The Minoan high point lasted only a couple of hundred years, as around 1600 BCE, the volcano Thera erupted, destroying the Cycladic Minoan settlement of Akrotiri. Perhaps, the gods were angered by their human sacrifice. Perhaps, it wasn't enough. Within 500 years, the Minoan civilization was no more. We are fairly certain it was this eruption which caused the Minoan's sudden decline. The final punch could have been the Mycenaeans. Originating on the mainland around 1750 BCE, the Mycenaeans, an Indo-European people, are considered to be the first advanced Greek civilization. It was from the Mycenaeans that we would discover Linear B, which descended from the Minoan Linear A, and is the oldest form of the Greek written language. By 1600 BCE, they had developed many palaces and city-states. Athens was one, but as of this time, the city was still of little importance. The main palace was at Mycenae. Their architecture was dubbed Cyclopean masonry, as the limestone boulders were so heavy, and placed with little to no space between them, that it was akin to the work, only capable of a giant cyclops. The name could fit, as the Mycenaeans were warriors by nature. While the Minoans traded peacefully, and influenced the Mycenaean culture, their new neighbors to the north, were almost barbaric by comparison. That isn't to say the lifestyle didn't breed innovation. Mycenaeans had access to the war chariot, a potent offensive weapon. Because of the constant warfare, they would have to build their citadels on hilltops, a defining feature of later Greek society. This was called an Acropolis. Their cities could also manage far less people than the Minoans, just a few thousand. Each city was headed by a king, what they would call a Wanax, meaning tribal chief, or military leader. These Wanaks would preside over the landowning elite, while slaves were at the bottom of the hierarchy. Nobles were buried in graves, with bronze weapons, signifying the importance of their militaristic culture. By 1400 BCE, after the Minoans began to falter, the Mycenaeans became the hegemonic power in the Aegean. They took control of Crete, building on Knossos, and began to expand towards Asia Minor. On the western coast was a city, called Wailusa in the Hittite language. This is translated as Troy. Evidence suggests there was indeed a battle here, more akin to a war, and while we still don't know the details, the Mycenaeans seemed to be the army involved in sacking Troy, in the 1200s BCE. The Trojan War, or the Iliad, along with the Odyssey, were epics that were written around 500 years later, by Homer, during the Archaic period. All this, still centuries before Greece's classical age which we are so familiar with. We will get to classical Greece in an upcoming episode, so be sure to subscribe. Though based on fact, the Iliad, is still surely more legend than reality. Most of the Greek myths we are familiar with, though written later, are based in the Mycenaean age. 
This age, however, was about to come to an end. The force that changed the Near East would also change Greece. Perhaps the Mycenaeans were still weak from their campaign in Troy, but they were overrun from around 1200 BCE, in what we know as the Bronze Age Collapse. Their cities were sacked, palaces abandoned, and villages destroyed. Most theories attribute this to either the mysterious Sea Peoples, who ravaged the Hittites and Egypt, or to the Dorians, a group of particularly vicious barbarians out of the north. Either way, the Mycenaeans' disunity caused the civilization to dissolve completely, around 1000 BCE. Urbanization ceased, and people were left to revert to small tribal communities. Greece was left a decaying, empty graveyard, watched over by the ruins of once majestic palaces. With barely a chance to glow, Greece would enter a period of darkness. The Greek Dark Ages had arrived. 